Hello friends, this video on Organic Industry Basics Part 28 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before we talk about inductive effect, let's talk about electronegativity charge because inductive effect is all about the effect due to difference in electronegativity. So if you see, uh, the most important the carbon is 2.55, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, all these you have to remember actually. If you go down, the electronegativity is going down. Carbon and hydrogen is almost the same, 2.2, 2.5, right? And these are the mainly used actually. Boron also sometimes required. So if you remember the electronegativity of these, hydrogen, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine, this should be sufficient. So if you see the fluorine has the maximum electronegativity in, in this chart, hydrogen is the least. Then we have boron, then we have carbon, Correct. So you just have to remember this chart actually. Correct. So this is my strength. Bromine is the least electronegative. Chlorine is the max. Carbon is somewhere here. Bromine, hydrogen, carbon, they are uh, having less electronegativity. And iodine also almost same. And then we have bromine, nitrogen, chlorine, and chlorine. Chlorine is the maximum. So remember this electronegativity chart. So having understood the electronegativity chart, let's start with the inductive effect. And this is nothing but displacement in covalent bond. Please note. So inductive effect, if you see, is as I told, is nothing but due to difference in electron negativity. Right? So electron density is more towards more electron negative atoms. So in a covalent bond, so if I have a bond between two atoms and there's a difference, a good difference in electron negativity then the electron density is more towards more electronegative atom because more electronegative atom will try to attract electron towards itself. For example, if you see in this case, chlorine is more electronegative than carbon. So chlorine will try to attract electron towards itself. So chlorine will develop a partial negative charge. Carbon will develop a partial positive charge. And it will result in a polar covalent bond. Please note this type of covalent bond is not non-polar. This is polar covalent bond. This is covalent bond but it has some partial polar characteristic. And we take once again, this kind of effect is because of the difference in electronegativity where the more electronegative atom will try to attract electron towards itself and it will develop a partial negative charge and the, carb, the other one will develop a partial positive charge and it is a permanent effect. Correct? This is a permanent effect. Correct? And this effect, if you see, is, is a reduce subsequently. For example, this has partial positive charge, this has all the more or less positive charge. This, this, if, you, if you add a more carbon uh, methyl group here, that will have all the more or less positive charge. Uh, I think after two or three carbons, this effect is almost gone. So after three bonds, this effect is almost gone. Right? But this is a permanent effect. And as I, so, as I told, chlorine is the one which attracts electron. So there can be a group which either donate electron also. So there can be a group which withdraws electron. For example, in this case, chlorine is withdrawing electron and carbon is uh, getting a partial positive charge. There can be a group which donate electron to the carbon and carbon gets a partial negative charge. For example, methyl group is a electron donating group. We will talk about that. And also, please note that this happens only in sigma bond. Please note the pi bond is not involved. So when you talk about these kind of thing, this is, doesn't happen. It happens only in sigma bond. Correct. So they told there are two different type of uh, uh, group actually. The one which withdraws electron and the one which donate electron. So we'll study about these groups also later. And also note that one thing to notice: sp orbital is more electronegative than sp. Why? See, if you see sp orbital has more s character. This is fifty percent s character, and if you see sp two having 33% S character and 66% P character, right? 66.6 and this is 33.3. So the more the S character, more is the electronegativity. Why? Because S, S orbital, if you see, is more close to nucleus. Correct? So it can attract more electron. You see S is like this and P orbital is something like this. So, be, so P is not close to nucleus. S is more close to nucleus. So S, P orbitals are more electronegative than sp2. Please understand this point. We'll use this to 
uh, explain some of the inductive effect. The sp orbital, since it has more s character, and when you talk about s orbital, that is more close to nucleus, so it is more electronegative than sp2 orbital, which has less s character. So we'll take one example of inductive effect, that is CH triple bond C, CH, CH2. Now the question is whether inductive effect will come in this or not, right? So now let's see the hybridization of all this. This guy is SP, right? One bond, one bond. This guy is also SP. This guy is SP2. And this guy is SP2. Correct. So if you see, this is SP and this is SP2. As I told, S, this has 50% S character and this guy has 33% S character. And as I told, SP is more electro negative than SP2. Why if you see this shape, right? This is my S. This is my s or this is one s, this is two or s. And this is my s orbital, the one in the uh, circle, right? The spherical one. And this is my p orbital. So electron here, right, are farther away from nucleus. So if it is s, s orbitals, it can attract electrons more, correct? Because it is closer to nucleus. So s orbital will be more electronegative than p orbital because p orbital are farther away from nucleus. This is my nucleus, actually, you see, right? The one in the red one. So, this p orbitals are farther away from nucleus, so they can attra uh, the attraction is less the nucleus between the nucleus and the p orbital. But if you see the s orbital, it is more close to nucleus. Correct? So, s orbital is more electronegative than p orbital. With that, with that this is this carbon is more electronegative than this carbon. Let me number this. This is carbon 1, this is carbon 2, carbon 3, and carbon 4. Since this carbon is more electro, carbon 2 is more electronegative than carbon 3. So carbon 2 will try to elect, attract electron toward itself. So carbon 2 will get slightly negative charge and carbon 3 will get slightly positive charge and this will get slightly less positive charge. So this will be the inductive effect in this. Here if you see carbon 2 will have slightly negative charge and this guy will have slightly positive charge. Correct. So if a nucleophile is supposed to attack the so nucleophile is what nucleophile is one which loves nucleus that which has negative charge right so it will try it will generally attack in this position if it's an electrophile is one which loves electron that is it has a positive charge if this electrophile will attack it will try it will generally attack in this position that is what we'll see in the reaction mechanism but just understand that in this case there's an inductive effect and carbon one carbon two is hogging the electron and carbon one the 2 is getting a slight negative charge and carbon 3 is getting slight positive charge. Correct. So as I told, the group which is causing inductive effect, they can withdraw electron or they can donate electron. So there are two types of inductive effect, right? Based on whether the group is electron withdrawing or electron donating group with relation to hydrogen. And as I told, the application of inductive effect is it is used to determine stability also. We'll, we'll see this point where we'll take some examples where we'll see that uh, some of the compounds are more stable because of inductive effect. So as I told, there are two groups, electron withdrawing and electron donating group. Let's take the electron withdrawing group first. So that is called minus I effect. So in this case, an electron withdrawing group is attached. And why it is called minus I effect? Because they withdraw electrons. So if they, for example, I have some group, for example, I have NO2 group attached to, let's suppose, benzene. So this is getting electron toward itself, right? This guy is getting electron toward itself. So this is a withdrawing, so it is minus I effect. Correct? Electron withdraw, right? So it is minus I effect. Correct? See, minus means also withdraw, plus means add, right? So that also you can remember, plus means add electron plus i means electron the group is adding electron minus i means it is withdrawing electron and these groups are nitro groups no2 cyano group cn carboxy or ester 
and if we talk about the I effect strength and trends, NS3 plus is the strongest one. Then is NO2, then CN, SO3H, CHO, CO, and the list continues. H is the weakest one. Then OH also has a minus I effect. COH also has a minus I effect. NS2 also has a minus I effect. So this is my trend for inductivity. Please remember this chart is pretty critical here. When we talk about minus I effect. The next is the plus I effect. So these are the electron donating group. For example, methyl, ethyl, OH, NH2. These are my plus I effect because they donate electron. And the trend if you see tertiary this is my CH33C and this is tertiary this is secondary, this is C2H5, ethyl, and this is methyl. So this guy is ha having more plus I effect. And why they are called plus I? Because they donate electron, right? They donate electron, so they are plus I, right? They donate, so they donate means plus, right? They donate electron, they are plus I. They would, the other one was minus I because they withdrew electron, correct? So minus I effect, I would like to take one example, in fact, a minus I effect actually. So CH3, CH2, Cl for example. So if you see carbon electronegativity is 2.55, Cl is what? 3.16. So if you see there's a difference in electronegativity and thus chlorine will attract electron towards itself. So chlorine will become a minus I effect, correct? Why? Because chlorine is subtracting electron from the system, right? Subtracting electron from the system. So what this chlorine is doing? Chlorine is subtracting electron from the system. So if you talk about CS3, for example, if you talk about this guy, benzene with a CS3 group. So the CS3 group is adding electron to the system. So it is plus I effect. So you always think from a system perspective. So in the system, if somebody is subtracting electron, right, that is taking electron, subtracting electron is a minus I effect. In the system, if somebody is adding electron, it is plus I effect, correct? Think from the system perspective. Don't think from this groups donating or withdrawing group perspective because we are bothered only about the system. In the system, if somebody is adding electron, it is plus I effect. In the system, if somebody is taking out electron from the system, it is minus I effect. Right. We'll take one example of plus I effect. For example, in this case, right, CS3. CS3 in this case will plus B plus I effect. Why? Because CS3 will give electron to this system. So we talk about this system, right? This system. This is the system. And in this, I have attached a group CS3, and CS3 is giving electron to this system. And why it is giving electron to this system? If you see, this carbon is sp3 hybridized. And this carbon, if you see, this is a carbon here. This is sp2 hybridized. Correct. So in this percentage, s character is what? 33% s. And this is what? 25% s. Correct. 25% s and 75% p. And this is guys, 33% s and 66% p. Right? That, that is what we have discussed. Since this guy is more s, this carbon is more s, this carbon will attract electron towards us because this carbon is more electronegative carbon. More electro negative carbon. So if you compare this carbon, let's suppose there's a carbon and call it carbon one, this carbon two. So if we compare carbon one and carbon two, carbon two is more electro negative as compared to carbon one. Correct. So carbon two will attract electron from carbon one, and thus if you see CS3 has a plus I effect. Correct. Why CS3 has a plus I effect? You see this example. CS3, if you see, normally is SP3 hybridized and this guy is SP2, right? So this carbon 2 is uh, more electronegative than this carbon 1. So carbon 2 will pull electron and thus if you see, if you see this the whole system. In this system, CS3 group is adding electron. So it is plus I effect. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, 
study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.